gathered together uh, in the sanctuary uh, to rightly divide the word of truth and to praise him and to magnify him and to learn of his precepts, uh, to learn of his word, and uh, no better place uh, that we would desire to be than the house of God. And uh, we appreciate the press, the sacrifice. I know it's a little cold out there, <laughs> uh, colder than normal. Um, uh, my travels lately make me appreciate California a whole lot uh, the more uh, compared to what some of our southern states are getting, east coast saints are getting. So, um, again, we're glad to be in the service one more time, glad to be in the sanctuary. I'm glad that you pressed to be here and glad that uh, uh, the Lord has uh, given you a desire, uh, wherever you may be, even the sanctuary at home, uh, to be with us tonight uh, in Bible study. Um, before we get started tonight, just want to remind you, um, our corporate consecration, uh, we're now two weeks into our corporate consecration with two weeks to go. Y'all feel all right? <laughs> amen, 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 amen. It's all right. I mean, let's continue to journey. Let's continue to press. Uh, every now and then you get off course, get back on course. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Throw the day away, you know, <laughs> uh, give up for the day. I've been there before, y'all. I know what it's like when you're in consecration and you have something and, ah, well, that's all right. I'm just going to go ahead. No, you know, go ahead, rebuke the flesh and get back on course, you know. Uh, uh, treat yourself to an extra hour, <laughs> you know, if you mess up for it. Um, but um, stay in there. Stay encouraged. That's what the enemy wants you to do. That the tactics of the enemy are just trib and how he desires to use one mess up to try to tear up your relationship with God or one bad experience or one bad moment or um, one mistake, um, one uh, misplayed judgment. And we'll try to do that. We'll try to sour your relationship with God just based upon one experience. And so um, I encourage you, let's continuing um, to fight. Even the Lord our God had to fight when he was fasting. Uh, the voice of temptation telling him, you know, to uh, to cower and to tell him to, you know, not operate in victory. And uh, what we must know is that God has already given us the victory in our consecration. Um, and that's what helps us overcome. So get back on the wall for those of you at home um, that are on this journey with us. Uh, uh, be empowered. Stretch yourself. You know, if you feel like, you know what, hey, I made it to four o'clock with a breeze and just, hey, you know what, I'm going to go to dinner time or I'm going to go a little bit further or I'm just going to have a sip of water and go a little bit further. So stretch yourself. Um, that's what uh, consecration is all about. It's challenging ourselves to fight against the enemy. And so I pray that you're victorious in this and uh, we look forward to hearing the success stories, already hearing the testimonies in New Day Prayer of people who are being encouraged, um, how our faith is being increased, how we're being strengthened in our consecration. Uh, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, and I pray that we'll continue to hear those testimonies um, as we continue uh, fasting before our Lord. Um, before we get into prayer tonight, I uh, just want to make you aware of a couple announcements just for housekeeping purposes. I know we have been talking for a little while about the construction project that's coming. Well, y'all, it's officially here. <laughs> it's here. Starting Monday, they start uh, the renovation project here on Crenshaw to revitalize and to remodel uh, the Crenshaw, the, the historic Crenshaw wall. Um, that is going to be now a tourist destination for all those that come to visit, you know, the Los Angeles area. And those have already started to see construction spots all up and down uh, this area. Um, and we're next. So across the street is going to be a park. And in front of the church is going to be a little parklet so that uh, you can actually sit and have lunch if you desire. And, of course, the revitalized wall uh, that will be open to um, spectators and just uh uh, guests and visitors of the city. So just want you to be aware of that. It starts this Monday. So uh, with that in, 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 in mind, uh, the project is supposed to go uh, beginning on the 22nd all the way through September. Um, so with that in mind, just know that, again, we're going to be starting our runs and we'll have additional parking. So don't trip. We got you. Of course, if you come early, <laughs> there's plenty of street parking up and down this back area over here. Uh, you certainly can do that. Uh, we make sure, you know, the parking spaces we keep for our our seasoned saints and for our guests and visitors. So if you can, you want to welcome. But know that we also have parking right across the street at Crenshaw High School. So the parking lot's going to be open to us. We have our shuttle bus. They'll come by and pick you up and, and bring you back. And we'll have security over there as well. 
trail, so you don't have to worry about nobody running up on you, <laughs> you know. Um, so we have things to accommodate us. Don't let that be an excuse, y'all, not to come to church, all right? Um, we're going to be inconvenienced, but an inconvenience, we're going to press, and God is going to bless us even as we sacrifice. And then there's other things you can do. There's always ride share options. There's always carpooling, all uh, right, so that we can save at the tank, but also be brothers and sisters and show compassion to one another. So um, come up with a plan, come up with a strategy. Above all, just come early. You come early, you won't have to worry about none of it, all right? <laughs> so uh, we're excited, again, about what we're going to see right in front of our eyes. Um, I think there's going to be a great learning experience about rebuilding the wall that may come from, you know, this construction project and the things that we're building as disciples this year. So uh, pray that you'll be, uh, be attentive um, and that most importantly, it won't stop you from evangelizing. Hey, you know, uh, we still want people to come to church and we have options for you. We'll take care of you, take care of your children, take care of you spiritually, naturally. That's what God has called us to do. So uh, praying that I uh, just wanted to put that out there so that you have that information um, so that you can govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Do we have any prayer requests tonight in the sanctuary? Okay, amen. We have one prayer request on uh, the prayer line tonight. Anybody else in the sanctuary? Amen. Unspoken prayer request, just wave your hand. Amen. The Lord knows. He knows. It's been one of those days. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your mercy and your compassion and your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness that's better than life. We thank you, O oh God, for our life, health, and strength. We thank you for our sanity. We thank you, O oh God, for your consistency in an ever-changing world, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that even in this uh, arena where we're challenged and it's oppressed in our spirit, O oh God, you remain strong on the inside, O oh God. And we praise you. And we magnify you and we glory even in tribulations as your word instructs us to do. And I pray tonight, O oh God, that something would be shared as the word of God comes forth, O oh God, to comfort our hearts, O oh God, but to uplift us, but to continue the press and the burden of being the people that you desire us to be, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for a revelation, illumination. We pray, O oh God, that your word permeate even the sanctuary tonight as it comes forth, O oh God. We come against distractions. We come against burdens. We come against the spirit of oppression. Let your people be free tonight to worship and praise your God as we rightly divide the word of truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. Let's go to the word, saints, amen. We begin our Bible classes with a few passages of scripture always, amen. The book of John, chapter number eight, verses 30 uh, through 32. And again, we say praise the Lord to those watching online, amen. Uh, verses 30, shout out to my wife, the real MVP for grabbing the kids so that we can get down here. <laughs> Amen. I normally have pickup duty, so I appreciate her. Amen. Swapping with me today. Uh, John 8, <laughs> 30 through 32, and then over in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and chapter number 3. Amen. So John chapter 8, verses 30 through 32, here we begin to read of God's holy word. As he spake these words, many believed on him. And then Jesus said to those Jews which um, believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The disciples continue in the word, and the di disciples are able to differentiate truth, and in differentiating that truth and having the knowledge of the truth, they are indeed free. Nothing makes you more freer than being disciplined. Nothing makes you more freer than being a disciple, a follower of Christ. I hope y'all catch that in the spirit. Amen. Second Timothy chapter number two and verse number 15 uh, tells us to study, to show ourselves approved, study to show thyself approved unto God. A work of need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. A personal commission, a personal invitation that we have, a personal mandate that we have to study God's word. Amen. For his approval purposes only. Amen. And then over in chapter number three, verses 16 and 17, if you need the reading of God's holy word, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, uh, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading here of his word. Amen. Again, uh, we've been exploring the concept of prayer and fasting, and I hope that um, you all have received something from it. I hope that in our daily devotions, uh, there's been some element of affliction of the flesh, amen, or some concentrated effort in our prayer um, that helps us uh, kind of uh, not so much just, you know, consume the time. Sometimes you're just kind of just waiting for the clock to turn. Nah. Um, but hopefully these devotions and these focuses are giving us perspective of the things that God uh, would desire of us um, as we um, embark upon this journey of discipleship. And we certainly cannot be disciples without compassion. 
can be disciples without having a focus centered on helping others um, and not just helping those that we like. All right. Not just helping those that uh, our relationships, sometimes they have to benefit us for us to care. There has to be uh, some kind of reciprocation in order for us to take a vested interest. But compassion for us believers or um, moving ourselves and putting ourselves in the place of Jesus, who at the cross, amen, knew that the person he was dying for was, you know, playing the video game. He was no conscious of him dying, yet he has compassion. Uh, the person, you know, who, you know, uh, just is going about the day with no idea of who God is, yet uh, he hangs on that cross to have compassion. That's the compassion that we got to have. That's the compassion that God is looking for each and every one of us to have. The compassion to look after those who have no consciousness or even no way of repaying us for the deeds, amen, that we can provide compassion toward them in, in, in whatever phase that God has anointed us to be a blessing to them. Um, being compassionate. In, in our hearing, being compassionate with our involvement and our engagement. Sometimes one of the indictments on the believers is that we're very selfish and self-centered. And there are times in your relationship with God you must be selfish. Get that, all right? The scripture says save yourself from this untoward generation, all right? So there is an element of selfishness that comes with your salvation, but at the same time, there is an element of compassion that must be invoked that in saving myself, I want to see you saved as well. All right. As much as I want to preserve myself and keep myself from drowning and from on the deep end, you know, here's my leg, grab my leg, you know, don't, don't pull me down. <laughs> Amen. But I don't want to see you sink as well. And those of us who are enlightened, that's our passion. You ever been there before? You got loved ones and you say, I just wish you would have this illumination. I just wish you would have this gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm not trying to shame you. I'm not trying to. I had a beautiful experience in Detroit a couple weeks ago um, celebrating um, the uh, life of one of my cousins who passed away. And, um, you know, that they know me as the rare of the pastor, you know, oh, pastor playing space tonight. Oh, pastor, they getting it in. And yeah, I'm just I'm just enjoying, you know, being amongst family. And sometimes that's an indictment because there's this critical view of the believer as you won't engage. You won't involve yourself. And I said to myself, you know, this is an opportunity for us to be all things to all men. And I don't have to lose my character to show compassion, but also engagement and involvement. And it can't just be, oh, y'all going to be doing what y'all want to do, so I'm just going to go to the hotel. No, I, there was an opportunity for us, amen, to shed a different experience. And in shedding a different experience, there was an opportunity for those to open themselves. And I couldn't help but think to myself, wow, this was the, probably the one uh, church service that they got a chance to enjoy where nobody was screaming at them or no one was indicting them. Just me being there, they understood I represented something. All right. So they knew that, hey, we got to turn the music. All right. <laughs> or this is vulgar or this is, all right, or, you know, hey, or, you know, let's make sure the Reb don't drink out of this, <laughs> this cup of this, this Kool-Aid. All right. <laughs> this is not Kool-Aid, Pastor. Right. But nevertheless, um, it opened my sensitivity to understand what God desires of us, and that is for us to be uh, awkward, to be uncomfortable, but to do it for his glory, to be in places where we can use the influence that God has given us, amen, to want to be compassionate about others. And I just kept saying to myself, wow, I wish you knew what I knew, not to denigrate you, not to put you down. I wish you could enjoy the high of life without feeling like you got to go outside every five minutes. Ooh, help me tonight. And I know some of y'all, I know some of y'all feel that same way. It's the compassion of, I wish you could enjoy life without feeling like you need to have six coworkers on Friday afternoon to enjoy it. And you claim that to be happy hour. Ah, so that's that compassion. That compassion is like, man, I wish, I wish you was up on game. I wish you knew the wonders of this C.C. Winans project. <laughs> I wish you knew the wonders of, you know, of, of living a life without feeling like you have to uh, um, mimic a, a false sense of reality and, 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 you know, purpose your life based upon things that we know are not even real. So that's a whole other subject. But nevertheless, I thank God for um, his compassion toward us. And I hope that in our consecration, we would avail ourselves to do that. I'm off targets. So let me get back on. We're on fasting. All right. <laughs> all right. The purpose of the fast to loosen the bands of wickedness, the bonds of wickedness, uh, to undo the bands of the yokes, to let the oppressed go free, um, to break every yoke. Um, 
Um, these are all things that we gleaned uh, from the book of Isaiah chapter 58. And now we're kind of exploring different fasts in the Bible. I love these kind of studies where you can kind of pull apart and break apart different fasts. So tonight, um, I want to start with one fast. Last week, we dealt with the apostles fast. All right. This is the indictment on the apostles. You're supposed to have power. We, we came to you for power. You had no power. And Jesus instructing his disciples, amen, that some things will come up by prayer and fasting. There's another element of your faith that goes beyond you just doing works. There's a faith you must have in the process that makes you disciplined. I hope that that's one thing we take away from this month is that there's an expectation God has for us in our discipleship for us to be disciplined. And fasting and praying helps us build that formula of discipline. Ah. Discipline so to the point that the Bible says that uh, uh, Daniel prayed <laughs> 21 days. <laughs> the presence of God was not with him, but he remained disciplined. It wasn't until after that experience that the Lord came upon him and gave him the revelation and insight that he desired. For some of us, God is honoring the discipline. It's almost like being on a plane. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. And, and I, when I get on the plane, y'all, I try to get that window. I try to go to sleep. And I, God bless who's ever on that plane. Sometimes I make myself as tired as I can be because I just desire to sleep. <laughs> All right. Um, and so, you know, occasionally I will catch the instructions. Lord, help me. And when that when the stewardess or the steward comes and gives the instruction about the plane and, you know, these for emergency purposes in the case of an emergency. Right. You're going to see these things come out of the out of the I can't even as many flights as I've had in my life. Y'all, You would think I would know the script by heart. <laughs> I still don't struggle. But I just know that if something goes wrong, these things are going to come up out of the out of the plane and I'm going to put it on and I'm going to put it on as tight as I can. And the first instruction is secure your own mask before you help anybody else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's the first thing I know. If it's going down, as much as I love whoever's next to me and want to see the, you know, again, sometimes salvation, there's an element of selfishness. But nevertheless, um, there's instruction that sometimes we miss. They'll tell you that in the case that uh, the plane is going down and you put this mask on, it may appear as if the tool is not working. Ah. Right. <laughs> uh, but they say, keep it on. It's working even when it looks like it's not working. Amen. I feel like running tonight, y'all. Prayer and fasting is that. It's that mask, y'all. It don't look like it's working. And that was the, the whole desire of God, amen, in that last uh, Bible study we had dealing with the disciples um, was to get them to change their appetite. To yearn for the things of God to make them disciplined, to recognize that sometimes in praying and fasting, it may look like it's not working, but it's working. And you have to get that in your spirit, that when I commit myself to afflicting my flesh, when I commit myself to having an endeared relationship with God, it may look like it's not working. It may look like God is not answering prayers, but you got to trust it's working when it don't look like it's working. Oh, help us. <laughs> Uh, and so he says this kind, all right, the, uh, the, the spiritual things, the things that we're after, amen, come from a deeper connection with God. They come from a deeper resistance. They come not just from the actions, not just from the authority, but the sensitivity that comes that we glean when we enter into that space of communion with God. All right. Tonight, I want to shift gears to uh, the Ezra fast. Let's go to the book of Ezra chapter number eight. All right. Anybody know anything about Ezra? <laughs> no wrong answers. <laughs> Old Testament prophet, all right, <laughs> or considered a minor prophet, uh, but Ezra is part of the rebuild. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's important because. Part of our corporate consecration, I believe an element that's associated with it, um, is the rebuild. For some of us, this consecration is helping us rebuild walls, boundaries, gates. You need this corporate consecration because there's some gates that need to be fortified in your life. There's some things, amen, that come to our mind. There's some mindsets. There's some relationships. There's some things that if you start this year off, God is like, whoa, you need to reinforce. <laughs> mm. 
So God raises up this prophet by the name of Ezra, who is here to record the return of Israel and the rebuilding of her foundations. Ezra is always, or not, Israel is always deemed as a bride or from a female perspective, all right? So when we, when we deal with Ezra, well, Israel from that perspective, it is from that feminine um, God taking ownership, uh, that childlike relationship, amen, of accountability. So after 70 years of exile, the people of Israel are going back home. Thank you, Jesus. There's a new uh, Persian emperor by the name of Cyrus, all right? He's the emperor. All right. And he has decreed that the people have been oppressed for a season of 70 years. All right. Of affliction. It's been prophesied because of their own mishandling, undoing their own um, um, just waywardness and wickedness that was prophesied that they would have to endure this affliction. And it goes all the stems all the way back to uh, them coming into the promised land after Joshua told them. All right. If you get in, if you start intermarrying, if you start whoring after other gods, if you forget the work that we did in Egypt, you're going to deal with the consequences. So sometimes it takes a long time for God's judgments to catch up. <laughs> ah, help me tonight. We think we're getting by. And sometimes um, it, it, it may take some time and he does. He, he honors his word and his word comes to fruition. But then it comes a season. When God also sends other words, it's crazy that in the midst of the conflict, there were words that would come from Isaiah and words that would come from Jeremiah in the midst of the rebuke, in the midst of, of all the things that were going on here, are these minor prophets who say in the midst of your affliction, I see Jesus. <laughs> ah, yes, you got a wayward spirit, but in the midst of it, I see Jesus. Uh, uh, I, 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 I know that things are crumpling around you, but the government shall be upon his shoulder. <laughs> uh, and and they, they speak uh, uh, concerning his prowess and his authority. And there's hope even in their and consolation, even in the midst of their confusion and the midst of their destruction. And so Ezra is one who comes at a most critical time when God says time is up. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I feel a release in the house tonight. If you'll just follow me prophetically, I hear God saying, this is the year for some of y'all time is up. Thank you, Jesus. You've been beating yourself up. I feel release in the house. It don't, it, 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 God is saying time is up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been wearing that weight. It's crippled you. It's debilitated you. You've been in that place of spiritual ruins and ruts. You've been in that place where you've served the punishment. God's saying his time is up. Now you've got to get up and go and rebuild. But it's bad. Get up and rebuild your credit. But I've burned so many bridges. Get up and build again. I feel God tonight. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Time is up. That's the word that's coming toward the people. Time is up. Ah, and not only is time up, I'm going to send resources to you to help you put your life back together again. <laughs> to go back and build me a house. <laughs> the house laid in ruins. And in the house laying in ruins and the people of God looking at the ashes and looking, ah, yes, at the degradation of what was once the beauty of a nation that sat on a hill. You have to remember, Jerusalem is an elevated place. <laughs> oh, y'all, this is blessing me, y'all. You have to remember, these are elevated people. They're not used to being down here. They weren't arrogant. They were just born up here. <laughs> ah, you can never get too low because of where and who you are. You're, you're up here. And set up here is his glory. There's a house that carries the glory of God that's placed uh, at the very place. It's, it's, it's housed right on the same lot, amen, that, that, that Abraham has to sacrifice Isaiah, or, I mean, uh, Isaac, literally. It's that, that, that very place. <laughs> It's the place where the glory of the Lord resides. It's a place of sacrifice, all right? It's also the very place that David went and borrowed money from and said, I cannot offer unto God something that didn't cost me something, all right? This place was proven. It was etched out, a place to carry and hold the glory of God, but it lays in ruins because of their own mistakes. I don't need you to get up and preach to me and tell me I messed up. I know I messed up. 
<laughs> don't need you to indict me. You know what I'm talking about, man. You don't need, I don't need nobody to tell me. <laughs> I know I sinned, fell short, amen, didn't live up to the mark. I need nobody to beat me and to arrest me for what I do know. I've lived with it for 70 years. And God says, get up and go back and rebuild. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Ah, so this whole time, amen, the city laid in ruins and the temple of God laid in ruins. And so here, Zerubbabel and Jeshua and others, amen, give instruction, amen, to uh, these people, amen, to get up and to rebuild the foundations, to rebuild the walls. And so Ezra is known as a scribe, all right? He's a prophet, but he's known as a scribe. Now, he is not to be mistaken for the scribes that we see in uh, the New Testament. All right, let's just teach for a moment. The scribes in the New Testament, they're clerical um, Pharisees, for lack of better words. They're the people who sit around and say, oh, you know, uh, um, uh, your shoes aren't tied right. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's to this. It's to they're the nagger and the complainers. They take, amen, the scriptures, amen, and they take all 613 of the statutes and they sit there with critical eyes, judging everything Jesus does and everything that happens in the sanctuary. They're on guard and on duty, like the hall monitors. Mm -hmm. All right. Remember hall monitors back in the day in school? You had a hall. OK, man, just my school. All right. I used to love when it was my turn to be hall monitor because you catch somebody, <laughs> you know, <laughs> one minute after the bell rings, you get to say freeze, you know, <laughs> and report them. All right. You know, not just my school. All right. <laughs> but that's what the scribes were in the New Testament. They were agitators. They were instigators. They were ones um, who would take the word of God and would hold everyone account accountable to every decrement of um, the laws. All right. And they end up finding themselves, the Sadducees, the Pharisees and the scribes all find themselves as individuals, the scribes um, that are that are. Uh, 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 counterintuitive to the work of the Lord, but the scribes were the more legalist one, all right? They were the ones who literally had, amen, rule and thumb concerning every law, precept, what have you. So those are scribes, but Ezra's a different kind of scribe. Ah, thank you, Jesus. It is his job, amen, to record the history. He is a scribe to record the sentiment of what's happening. His, this book is a historical. It's one of the most historical books. It's also married with Haggai. It's also married uh, with Nehemiah. It's married with a lot of these different minor prophets. Um, I know I'm missing one. Um, uh, I know I'm missing one. Uh, 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 it'll come to me when I'm not thinking about it. Um, but all of these different ones, um, these different minor prophets, will talk about the rebuild period of Israel. When the oppression is done, when the Lord gives him instruction to go back. And so here Ezra is, all right, and he comes with historical narratives. He has a responsibility to also um, uh, take into account uh, letters and decrees that are uh, coming from uh, the Persians' uh, uh, administration. Uh, he's also responsible for being a historian. And so much of his writings are books of prayers and reflections and their senses. And they're all the things necessary for the rebuilding. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's the backdrop of this fast. Uh, time always gets away from me. No, thank you, Jesus. But nevertheless, all right, his role, Abed, is to, his, his role is, 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 it's the arc of the history of the Israelites. It's important. It's fascinating, y'all. I love this kind of stuff, y'all. Because, you know, the first arc we have is Genesis, Deuteronomy. That's the first arc, all right? We call that the first arc of the Old Testament. That is, for some, they call it the Pentateuch, for some of them, the Torah, you know, part of the Torah, all right? It is the first book, the first five of the canons. It speaks specifically to the first part of the, of the period of the Israelites. You can kind of put them in different segments. So the first arc is their journey from Genesis to Deuteronomy. You can write that down if you want, all right? God called them to be a special nation. He teaches them their laws, all right? The second arc is from Joshua. All right. Joshua, the second Chronicles. This is when God gives Israel a king. All right. <laughs> uh, Israel loses his way. They disobey God. That's the second arc. All right. Then you have. All right. This arc. Amen. Um, it's not in order necessarily, but it includes Ezra as well as Esther and all these different kind. They're all kind of. But it's it's an important part. All right. Um, and it it. it, it talks about the restorative period of Israel um, from their exile to their return to their own land. I mean, all the different um, arcs associated and the stories associated with that, all right? So Ezra and Nehemiah, all right, these books were considered at one point to be one book, 
All right. Um, Ezra refocuses on the rebuilding of the temple. Nehemiah, the rebuilding of the city. Ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God's desire for us is not just to rebuild. All right. Spiritually, God wants to restore to you the commerce that you lost. He wants to repair the gates of everything associated with you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Not just your spirit, man. God says, I'm after the things that were squandered in this season. I'm after business plans. I'm after dreams. I'm after the community. I'm after rebuilding the armies. I'm, you have to think about everything that comes with the city. You get police. You get fire. You get working water, irrigation, right? You get good school systems, right? PTA. God says, I'm putting it all back together again because I don't want just you to build my house again. I want to rebuild the city as well. Ah, this is blessed be y'all. I'm sorry. Let me. <laughs> ah, so both of these stories kind of coincide and speak to God reestablishing Israel uh, in the land that he promised her. This is promised land. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, what a gift it is to be able to go back to a place that God promised and still find him as a faithful God, faithful to his promise. Thank you. I need y'all to catch that. I need y'all to, I need y'all to catch that. Open up your spirit. He promised the land. I squandered the land and I gave up the land, but God says it's still a promise. It's still promised territory. <laughs> and I'm going to go back and rebuild in the place that I abandoned. I'm going to go back and rebuild in the things I let slip through my hands. Y'all just, uh, all right. <laughs> so Ezra has the responsibility of pouring into a nation as Ezra speaks. I st talk about it all the time about if I were to stand right here in this courtyard and summon all of Crenshaw to come right here on this corridor of Crenshaw, right? And all of Crenshaw would come out and hear and receive the instruction of the Lord. All right. This is exactly what Ezra does. Ezra, the scribe, Ezra, the one who keeps meticulous notes about the thing that God does, summons an entire nation to come back and hear the decrees of the Lord. So they come now and they stand at the gates. They stand at the place of what was. And he stands and delivers. And the scripture says that as he's reading the scripture, all of Israel stood. I need you to imagine that. I used to love Malcolm X when he used to do this, right? <laughs> you ever seen that movie? <laughs> and he would do the thing, right? <laughs> and, and they would go, woo, right? <laughs> they would walk down the aisle. And I, all right, side note. But could you imagine, though, the people standing here on the streets with tears as they hear God's word read again? Could you imagine? I know we like to shout when we hear certain scriptures. Could you imagine the wail that would come from the belly ah, of the believers as, and the tears that would come as they remember? I remember this story. It was a story that I had in my heart for 70 years, but for 70 years it had been stopped up and I heard it again and it just did something as he's telling these, amen, statutes and stories and he's revealing the word of the Lord. You have a whole nation that surrendered, wasn't no iPhone, wasn't no distractions, wasn't, they stood there attentively and listened to the word and it was like honey to their ears. It was like, ah, thank you, Jesus, as, as God ministered and poured out himself. Thank you, Jesus. And he went back and rehearsed history. He went back as the scribe and went back through all what Moses said, went back through, amen, all the promises that God made through Israel. And the people affirmed and the people said amen. And the people, I just can only imagine them rehearing over and over again. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It's just hearing it all over again. Amen. How you must tear down the false idols, how you must surrender, how you must keep God first, how you must clean your hands, all of the Psalms and all the things uh, that were lost down through the years, all the experiences them hearing firsthand, re revisiting the story of them coming through. Ah, yes. Coming through at midnight. Coming through at the, tweet, the, at the twilight hour. God bringing them through. Amen. The hand of the enemy. The plagues. Bringing them over on dry ground. I can just only imagine them sitting there fascinated. Just like we sit there fascinated when we watch certain movies and we're stirred with emotions as we see certain things. Can I just imagine the scenes. All these things being rehearsed and the discourse that's taking place as the word of God is coming forth. All right. So he promises him. He almost repeats what Joshua does. All right. If they obey me. All right. <laughs> You'll enjoy good land and prosperity. 
you disobey me, you're going to face punishment and exile. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to chapter number eight. <laughs> uh, if I should get lost, all right, Ezra <laughs> chapter number eight and verse number 22, all right. Uh, so we fasted and besought our Lord for this and he entreated us. They got to back all the way up now. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. All right. Verse, you have to go back to chapter number six to understand this. King Darius makes a decree, and <laughs> oh God, I, I'd always do this, y'all. <laughs> uh, he makes a decree, and as they go back to build the house of the Lord, amen. Verse number, uh, chapter number six and verse number seven says, let the work of this house of God alone, let the uh, uh, governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in this place. They're given favor by the governors. They're given favored by the magistrates. They're given favor by the political officials to go rebuild the work. Verse 8 says, Moreover, I make a, dec a decree that ye shall do to the elders of the Jews for the building of this house of God, uh, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute be on the river, wherewith expenses be given unto these men, uh, that uh, they be, I'm sorry, that they be not hindered. I love that last clause. Write the check, homie. Give them whatever. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, the street came out of me. <laughs> whatever they need to get it done, they will not be hindered in this effort. Jesus, I need y'all to understand what's happening in this period of restoration. Cut the check, homie. Whatever they need, whatever gold they need, whatever silver they need, whatever tools they need, Give them, break them off, and get out of their way so that they can do what God instructed them to do. What would you do if the word for this season of you is a release with no hindrance? You need to catch, catch up with what God is saying in the spirit. <laughs> this is leading us to fasting, all right? It is. <laughs> and that which they have need of. If they need young bullocks, give them young bullocks and rams and, and, and lambs, all right? And for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven, give them the wheat, give them the salt, give them the wine, give them the oil. I could do a lesson just on what wheat is and what salt is and what oil is and all. All right. <laughs> According to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> ah. God, I'm telling you, when God wants you to rebuild without fail, it's going to find your hands. I, I just, uh, I feel like hollering in here, y'all, without fail. <laughs> give them provision. Give them the wheat. Give them the salt. Give them the sustenance. This work is so purposed that even the wicked king must recognize this is what, amen, God is requiring, and they have the favor to get it done. Now, I just, I skipped over all the weeping, all right, because <laughs> they went back to the altars and some cried, so I skipped all that, all right? I'm back in, we're in mission mode now to rebuild the temple of God, and Ezra is here giving us line per line details of how it's going to happen. It's going to happen without an hindrance. <laughs> it's going to happen <laughs> without delay. It's going to happen without argument. It's going to happen without protests and contests. It's going to happen without there being an HR review. It's going to happen without there being a caucus and without there being any legislation. Let these people do what their hands are to do in this season. I'm telling y'all, you have been released to do the work. Why are you? Why, why are you in here? Amen. This, why, what, what, you've been released. The season Amen. Of arrestment is over. The season of bondage is over. God says, get up and build. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to give you a blank check to build. I just. <laughs> Woo! Thank yes, you, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm, I'm losing myself tonight. Also, I have made a decree. And whosoever shall alter this word. Whosoever. <laughs> ah, the power of God's word is unstoppable. But on top of that, the king says, <laughs> whoever would try to add something to it or take something or alter it to it, <laughs> let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up, all right, let him be hanged thereon. This It's the Bible. I'm not, I'm not making it up. <laughs> and let his house be made a dunghill for this. If you try to compromise and mess up what the people of God are trying to build. 
pick out your own burial plot and we will turn your house into a public porter potty. That's the book. <laughs> That's the book without argument, without protest. Whoever would try to oppose this word is as good as dead. Ah, thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to go crazy up here. <laughs> and the God that have caused his name to dwell there, destroy all the kings and the people. And uh, that shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. Go ahead. When you get home tonight, I want you to look at verse number 12. That's Ezra 6 and verse 12. We're getting to 8, but I had to back up, all right? <laughs> Let it be done with speed. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. This is not a year for lethargicism. If I'm saying lethargic, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> This is not the year lazy. This is not the year of procrastination. This is not the year of waiting for people. This is not the year God says, let it be done. The king says, let it be done with speed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Obstacles cease. Mm -hmm. Anybody that wants to hinder this word. Now, the only thing that I'm requiring of you to do is to get it done quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go down even more. All right. And so if verse number 16 speaks, it's the children of Israel and the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. And they offered that dedication of this house of God, 100 bullocks, 200 rams, 400 lambs, um, and for a sin offering of all of Israel, 12 goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. These are the people coming back. He says, and they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written... In the book of Moses. <laughs> what is the book of Moses? All right. So, again, this is uh, the book of Leviticus. This is the book of Deuteronomy. This is the establishment of the word. Like, you know, um, don't want you going out looking for a book of Moses. All right. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. And the children of captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. For all the priests and Levites were purified together. All of them were pure. Look at the word coming off the page. The posture of people coming back to de dedicate, amen, a temple unto God, to try to come back and to rebuild, all right? Um, and killed the Passover over, uh, for all of the children of captivity and for the brethren priests. There was even provision for those. So there was compassion showed, all right, to those, amen, who are the children, the seed of, of in captivity and the children of Israel, which uh, were come again out of captivity, all such as had separated themselves from them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord, uh, uh, God of Israel and did eat and kept the fe feast of the unleavened bread seven days with joy for the jo for the Lord had made them joyful and turned the hearts of the king of Assyria unto them to what strengthen their hands. Thank you, Jesus, in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Look at the favor restored to a people because they had a mind to leave bondage and get back to work. My Lord. Look at the turn. Look at the provision. There's the decree of the king. If you mess with these people, you're as good as dead. <laughs> Whatever you do, here's a blank check. Just do it fast. I'm telling y'all, I, I have a, I, well, I just believe prophetically somebody's going to get that answer this year. Whatever you're doing in your business, whatever it is, God, is, whatever you do, just do it fast. <laughs> so I don't know the money's missing. Just do it fast before people start asking questions. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 7. Now is the process, amen, for which, amen, now, amen, uh, the Levites um, are restored to do the order. Um, and I'll spare you all the names, even though last night I thought I had them pretty good. <laughs> but after, after, uh, after um, uh, uh, Phineas and Eleazar and the son of Aaron and Azar and all the different sons of the Levites and the chief priests came, verse number, where chapter number seven, verse number six says, this Ezra went up from Babylon. He went up out of the place of oppression. This Ezra. This scribe. <laughs> and he was already scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord had, uh, Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him 
all of his requests according to the hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. Say it louder. All. all. <laughs> Say it. All. all. Everything he requested. <laughs> he pulled, because he understood the word, he recognized, do this work. I need people who are sanctioned and licensed to do this work. So I need to regather the Levites. Thank you, Jesus. I need to regather the tribes of those who are called to do the ministry, the priests. When we call for a leadership meeting, amen, when we call for those, amen, we're not just calling on the whim. We're calling people to help us build and do the work. Thank you, Jesus. I, okay, over your head. It's all right. Saturday, 8 to 12, right? All right, be here, all right? All right? And the king granted him all his requests. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And there went up some of the children of Israel, went up the priest, the scripture says, and the Levites, and bring the singers too. <laughs> Question. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is um, uh, in the reign of, of and, uh, and, uh, and the extra, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> king of Persia. All right. Now, after these things in the reign of, of king of Persia. Mm -hmm. So what I find interesting is that the pagan king, this one, and Cyrus are pagan kings, but they are doing God's work. Right. So just, just looking at the sovereignty mm -hmm. of God. People way They're wayward. They're not supposed to want to rebuild right. Right. God's kingdom or his temple because they're pagan kings. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Divine favor, pagan kings, no understanding, knowledge of God whatsoever, uh, yet writing blank checks for the people to do the work. Put yourself in scripture, y'all. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, piggybacking off what Sister Julia said, that came about, okay, the pagan kings, mm -hmm. actually, they came about because, if we recall, when Solomon, mm -hmm. when he prayed, yep. And the prayer that he prayed, if if the, the children of Israel, they were like thrown into captivity, mm -hmm. if they were, whatever was happening, if they turned their face toward this house. Yes. And when he said, if they were like cast into captivity, yeah. which they did because the mm -hmm. Lord did tell them in Deuteronomy. Yep. He gave them the blessing and the curses and Joshua went over it and everything. So being in captivity, the um, Artaxerxes, and Cyrus, mm -hmm. they were servant of God, even though they were pagan kings, to, like Sister Sylvia said, God work on the heart of the pagan king to say, your 70 years are up. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then pastor, I think he's, um, when it comes to King Cyrus, someplace else, God says, I have anointed you. I've called you even though you have not known me, yeah. right, mm -hmm. to do all these things for my people. Yeah. It's so encouraging, the word. It just shows God's power over all things, all period, yeah. to accomplish his purpose. Amen. 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 If you receive it, say amen. Amen. All of these strategic kingdoms and administrations come into alignment with God's plan. You talked about Solomon's prayer. We talked about the other day on the line when he, um, if my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, and how the prayer that leads before the Lord's response to King Solomon is a prayer that if, Lord, if we build this house, if we ever find ourselves, you know, at the hands of the enemy, if we turn our face toward this house, will you be with us? You know, if we find ourselves with plague and pestilence, if we turn our face toward this house, will you be with us? And that's when the Lord responds. Again, it got so thick in there that the Levites couldn't do, they couldn't sing the song. They couldn't, all they could do was fall and worship. And it was in that place that the Lord ministers and says, if my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, then when I pray heaven, forgive their sins, you know, and heal the land. The Lord was saying the remedy, amen, is a turned heart. If you turn your face toward a building, you want, if you just turn your heart toward me in repentance and humility, and affliction, which we find in consecration, then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sins and heal their land. 
So he was, he was doubling the ante. Not only will I be a place of refuge if you turn your face toward, toward me in my building where you find this relief, but if you more turn your heart toward me, because again, more than a physical house, he desired a house. If you do it in the heart, <laughs> amen, there's the condition of healing that you need. Thank you, Jesus. Back here at Ezra. So as Ezra gets up and does, amen, as uh, Adorexus, I'm, I'm just hope I, I always jack him up. <laughs> King A, all right. Um, all right. Uh, so he brings the singers and the porters and all those who do the work, all right, to come back, all right. And he has a copy of the letter that the king has given, amen, uh, to Ezra the priest, the scribe, even the words of the Lord and the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. All right. And so he kind of again um, talks again about how uh, at our excess, um, you know, gives uh, Ezra this authority. I'm down here in verse number 12 where he's talking about scribe of the law of heaven, perfect peace. And at such time, he says, I make a decree that all. Uh, that they all of the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites and the rim, all right, uh, which are minded of their own free will, go up to Israel, go with thee. For as much as thou art sent of a king and of the seven counselors, I write to inquire concerning Judah and Israel according to the law of God, which is in thy hand, to carry silver and to gold, all right, which the king and his counselors, the king and his administrations have freely offered unto the God of Israel. The gold and the silver that they were using to rebuild, amen, was their offering unto God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. That the free will offering of the people and that of the priest and the free uh, off, uh, the offering willing for the house of God, which is um, in Israel, that thou mayest buy speedily. All this was done. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, but again, make provision. All this free money, all this provision, gold and silver, that you may buy speedily, amen, with the money of bullocks, rams, lambs, all right, and meat offerings and drink offerings, and offer them unto the altar of your God in Jerusalem. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the gold and silver, that do after the will of your God. After you have used what I've given you to rebuild the house of God, then take what's left and do it according to the will of God. Think of that. I didn't mean to go down this path. <laughs> but after you finish building, after you take the gold and the silver, whatever's left, whatever he wills you to do, use it to do it. Ah, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Um, let me just skip over, all right, um, to chapter number eight, because, uh, again, I lose company. So now that he gathers all of the Levites, he does a census, chief of the fathers. This is the genealogy. Again, Ezra is the scribe, so he is the historian. He's telling you all of the men that he took with them. He took some 200 men of this tribe, 200 men of this son, 300 males of this son. All right? All of the sons uh, he speaks to, four score males of this family, 218 males of this family, all the different ones that he takes. And then verse number 15, he says, And I gathered them together what, to the river that runneth at Abba. And abode there in tents three days. And I viewed the people and the priest and found none there, the sons of Levi. So now I've got to go find. Now that I've got all these men, all this manpower, I now got to make sure I've got Levi. So he sells, so he sends of them and of the men that he speaks to. Eleazar of Ariel, uh, Shemama, and of, uh, of El Nathan, I'll call him, and of, of Jabra, and El Natha, and, and Nathan, and for Zechariah, and from Meshalem. Chief men also, Joriab and Elanathan, men of understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 17, and I sent a, a commandment unto uh, uh, Edio, all right? <laughs> Edio, all right, the chief of the place of Kashafiah. And I told them what they should do unto Edio and to the brethren of Nethinus and the, the place of uh, Kashafiah, uh, that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of God. Look at him reset order. And by the hand of God, uh, uh, and, by, and by the good hand of our God upon uh, us, they brought us men of understanding, the sons of Levi, etc., and all these different ones um, that are direct descendants upon David and the princes and appointed them services of Levites of 220 uh, uh, 
nethanyms, all of them expressed by name. He goes and takes the time to explain that. But this is now the purpose of the fast. Sorry I took you down the long way to Walmart to get here. But verse number 21, all right? Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river that we might afflict ourselves before God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. Why are we fasting? Because we've got a mandate to build. We've got a license to go forward. We have nothing hindering us. We have no uh, uh, intimidations. We have letters. We have papers. We have decrees from kings. We have people saying, if you get in the way, stop the doing as good as dead. We have all this substance, but we gather ourselves by the river. <laughs> and we afflict ourselves. We fast before our God to seek what? Of him a right way for us. We fast for direction. The truth of the matter is some of us, you got stuff, you don't got direction. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't have problems, you have issues with direction. Favor finds your hand, you don't have direction. So why do we afflict ourselves? That God would show us the way to go. We squander stuff. We have opportunities we blow. God says, I favored your hand and told you to build it, told you to do it, but you aren't accountable enough to afflict your flesh enough to say, God, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this, amen, the career path for me? Is this the degree I'm supposed to be pursuing? Is this the home I'm supposed to be buying? Is this where I'm supposed to be? We afflicted ourselves that God would show us with all that we have what our direction is. Because it's a sad thing to have stuff and favor and to have greater and have no direction. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. For I was ashamed to require of a king a band of soldiers and of horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way because we had spoken unto king saying that the hand of our God is upon all of them for good that seek him but his power and wrath is against all of them that forsake him so we fasted and besought our God for this and he was entreated of us I refuse to ask for help if God doesn't give me direction <laughs> What's the good of having all this stuff if God is not leading me? So we fast for direction. Because your flesh will have you going down a path to squander what God has given you to rebuild. I'm sick of my own advice. I'm sick of my own heart. I'm sick of my own mind. Come on, somebody, talk to me. I'm sick of my own game plan. I'm sick of somebody else's advice, what I think you should do. What if I was you? If I had what you had, that little spirit, you know, that, that, that if I had what you had, oh, you, you know, and, it, and it's, 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 it's a, a semi-compliment, but a semi-shade. If I had, if I was balling like you, if I was working like you, if I had your position, and we get advice from everybody but God. Ezra says we have a mandate to build and we got something to go back and do and we have papers and decrees that says nothing can stop us but wait a minute. Ah, thank you Jesus. Let's stop by the river and consult God. <laughs> Let's stop right here and consult him. Let's stop right here. Before we go and make a mistake, before we squander the things that God wants to do, let's stop right here and have a talk with Jesus. <laughs> Why are we fasting? Because you got plans, you have ambitions, you've got a green light, you've passed go, you've collected $200, and your eyes are on Baltic Avenue. And God says, I want you to seek me because maybe my will is in Marvin Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> got to stop playing Monopoly with the kids. I got to stop. They got me. <laughs> they be so competitive, you know. <laughs> you got your eyes on apartments and houses and all that kind of stuff, and you don't see the, the, the luxury tax. You don't see, ah, you don't, you don't know. I hear God saying that for us we have to be very careful 
and whatever it is that we're doing, that we go to the pulse of God, Ezra and his sensitivity. I have all the word behind me. I've got a word from God. I've got his word. I've got the word of the king. I've got the stuff. I've got the green light. I've got the momentum. I've got all the stuff going, but I'm halting here, God, to say where, 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 where. I refuse to have the nation behind me and I'm marching and I don't know where you're sending me. <laughs> I refuse to pastor with everybody saying, we'll follow you where we're going. And I don't pause to bark and say, God, where are you taking us? We fast for direct. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm no good at this. I, <laughs> I'm no good at this, y'all. Huh? <laughs> I get, get lost in my own <laughs> notes. <laughs> We entreated of God. Thank you, Jesus. I, I love what he says. I love what he says this. He says, the hand of our God is upon all of them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all of them that forsake him. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> what a clause. Go home and highlight that. The hand of God is upon all of them for good that seek him. But if you aren't seeking him, here's the inverse. His power. Who is more powerful than God? Who has a worse rage than God? Who can get more angrier than God? <laughs> Angry enough to cast to hell? Angry to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. What kind of wrath is that to say no more mercy? No more second chances. No more grace. No more forgiveness. You haven't seen a ticked off God yet. We got to stop playing with grace, y'all. We got to stop playing with grace, y'all. The hand of our God is upon them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all of them, all of them that forsake him. So we fasted. <laughs> so we made a decision we're going to seek him. We made a decision that right here by the waters, Jesus, we were going to shut up, amen, our flesh and our appetite that God would give us a direction necessary for the journey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there tonight. I pray. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Just in case I don't get to it, write these down. <laughs> I was getting ready to go to uh, the Samuel fast. We find in the book of 1 Samuel, but uh, the Lord didn't uh, steer us that way. But next week, Lord's will, we can come back to it if that's all right and we can deal with the Samuel fast. But do some pre-reading. Go back to uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 4. Just read 1 Samuel 4. You're actually, just we on consecration, right? We ain't supposed to be doing our stuff. Just start, go Samuel 1 all the way to Samuel 7. Just do some pre-homework for me, all right? And see when it comes alive and leaps off the pages. Cause there's a fast that we want to deal with that's here. And then I want to deal with the fast of Elijah. Because there's a fast even concerning mental burnout. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, ah thank you, Lord. The word be coming alive, y'all. I mean, maybe when you're just hungry. <laughs> Things just be like, you know. <laughs> you be getting these insights and stuff. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Because sometimes we just stop at the Daniel fast. And that fast was specific to Daniel's experience. And it's certainly one that we can duplicate and replicate. And I'd certainly encourage that. But it was Daniel's fast. It was for Daniel's experience. When are you going to ask, what is the Chiron fast? What is the Gary fast? You know. And what is it that God is asking you for? Ezra, it was park at the river. Can you imagine a multi, I need y'all to see this. I promise I'm done. A multi-millionaire parked at a river. And the restraint, thank you, Jesus. That's the, and the discipline 
to say, I'm going to park right here until you tell us where to go. Come on, bosses. Amen. Come on. The maturity and the grace that it takes to arrest yourself to say, you know, I don't want God's wrath. <laughs> no, no, I don't. No, I don't. Father, we thank you for your word. Even as we study this concept of fasting, I believe, oh God, it's giving us a new insight and giving us new wisdom and giving us new understanding, oh God, that we're in a season of release, oh God, with things to build and it requires discipline. And that discipline is conditioning our flesh, oh God. Ah, yes, to stay parked until you release us to go further. And Father, we're not going anywhere until you give us direction. This consecration corporately, oh God, is for direction for some of us. We have the education. We have the resources. We have the support system. We're loved. We're encouraged. We have even have our esteem. But Father, we're parked right here to say, God, what's next? Give wisdom tonight. In dreams tonight, show us where to go. Ah, help us dust off business plans. Help us dust off discouragement. Help us go back to those things that you place in our spirit, oh God, and realize we have a green light and we have provision and we have a declared word, oh God, to go forward in you without hindrance. Father, I pray that someone would come into agreement with the word tonight. Ah, God, let it be a blessing. Let it, oh God, be stirred in the hearts of the people, oh God, to do your work as it relates to rebuild, oh God, not just the house, but the house to rebuild the heart, to rebuild the relationship unto your glory, O oh God, with the silver and the gold and the precious minerals and the precious things, O oh God, that you're required in our heart, not on the exterior, but on the interior, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you would clean our hands, clean our hearts, O oh God, and help us, O oh God, be focused in our endeavor, O oh God, to please you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you tonight. May the Lord God keep you. Amen. Hang in there, saints. Amen. We're halfway through this journey. But I pray that as we grow a little bit more and more and more, that God will continue. Amen. To give us divine insight. I want to share with you a couple of announcements. If you want to be saved tonight, just wave your hand. I know we all tonight, but amen. Amen. Wash me over again, God. Amen. Send revival to me. Send me vision. Give me patience. Give me the discipline to wait on you. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. Give me the discipline, oh God. Yeah, I can write the check. Yes, I can do this, but give me the discipline to wait on you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray now, oh God, that you would touch someone's heart. Even if you're watching at home, you want to be saved, amen, pull up. We're here tonight. You can be water baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, to all of our saints and visitors and friends, again, we encourage you. We're looking forward to God blessing us on this week. want to remind you this Saturday, we're meeting with our leaders. Join us here at 8 o'clock prayer. Amen. Saturday morning. Amen. We're going to be sharing the vision for this year. It's a vision Saturday, so you can get some insight about the things that we're doing. And then we're going to do some evangelism. Don't worry about, amen, the rain. God's got something for us. Amen. I think it's going to be very interesting. Press your way. Amen. Push to be a part of it. Sunday will be here. Amen. Amen. Uh, I used to go when I was living in the Midwest for a small, small season. We go to church in negative four degree weather. Amen. We pump gas, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I wasn't wearing no beanie. My ears even now tingle when I consider <laughs> what I was doing. But nevertheless, press be here. Just slow down. Be cautious. Slow down. All right. Leave a little bit earlier. All right. But don't nothing disrupt what God wants to do in your life, amen, on this upcoming year. If you want to be a blessing, amen, you can, man, be a give, uh, uh, be a blessing to the house of God by giving. Encourage those of you at home who are watching the broadcast, be a giver, amen. Join us, 100% tithers, 100% offering givers, amen. Be a blessing. We have several ways, Cash App, PayPal, Zale, amen. There's a D missing on the PayPal, but it's, it's, we are Bethesda, all right? So, um, yep, yep, yep. Right there on the screen, um, there are ways you can be a blessing to us. Everybody sow into the kingdom of God. You've been blessed tonight by the word of God. Let's sow. Let's give a free will offering unto our Lord to show our appreciation and thanks for all the ways that he's making. Amen. And our hearts be encouraged as we go further in him. Amen. I want to remind ladies about diamonds and pearls. Amen. Coming up. March 1st through the 3rd, amen. We're excited about women's ministry endeavor. Singles, amen. The singles on February the 10th. Uh, there's an excursion, or not excursion, there's a bowling fellowship that's happening. So see Evangelist Karen White. There's going to be more information about that Sunday. Um, we're looking forward to that. Again, hang in there. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Amen. 
And uh, let's be dismissed. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your compassion. We thank you, God, for being with us tonight. We pray, oh God, that uh, you will continue to overwhelm us with favor, oh God. Help us not be weary in well-doing. Help us keep pushing and continue for the faith that was once delivered unto us. Give us traveling grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. God bless y'all. Get home safely. Amen. We love you all. See you all in Jesus' name. God bless. Take care. <laughs>